Hey everybody, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Mike McCutcheon, and today we're going to answer the question, can you lift fingerprints from paper with magnetic powder? Now, when I say paper, we're using that as all porous surfaces. So we have tile and things like that. That's non-porous. So we're talking about porous surfaces. So paper, uh, cardboard, unfinished wood, things like that. That would be uh, porous surfaces. So let's first do a, a, a little thing here. Let me just show you the magnetic powder because some of you may not be familiar with it. And then we'll, let's get to our experiment. Now, the magnetic powder, I'm going to shake it out here. Now, you can use different types of magnetic brushes. Here's this little small one here. I have the big boy here. Um, and they're going to work exactly the same. Uh, some people are bigger than others. That's all. So now we have my powder that I'm going to lift up. And you can see all of the magnetic powder on the magnet that is on the end of that brush. I'm going to pull up the top, that plunger, and that's going to pull the magnet from the top of the brush, or from the bottom of the brush, rather, up, and then it will release it. So how this is going to work, I like using magnetic powder for textured surfaces. So I'm going to dip my brush in. I'm going to develop my print. Ooh, baby, that's looking fine. So now I develop my print. I lift the plunger, put it back in, and then I go back, do my little cleanup. And, oh, yeah, that's looking fine. So now, oops. I just did that just to show you how the magnetic powder works. Clean that up because I'm going to lift this for you. So I developed it on a non-porous non surface, but it's textured. I really like magnetic powder for textured surfaces. So I just wanted to show you how it works. Now, the question is, I'm going to put that up there. I have my paper. Uh, what we want to know is, can you use magnetic powder to develop fingerprints on paper? Now, to do this experiment, um, it took three days to do this. So how we did that is, um, well, let's start with this. Your fingerprints are made up of about 99%, 98.5% moisture. You have these little ecrine glands in your fingers and they're gonna sweat, make your hands clammy. And sometimes when you have a really good fingerprint, you can actually see those little pores. Now there's also uh, sebaceous prints. Those are oily prints. So if we touch our forehead, we touch our nose, behind our ears, behind our back, we're gonna get those oils on our fingers. Now, if we start laying fingerprints down with those nice sebaceous, oily prints, we're going to get fingerprints all day. So let me tell you how I set this up. And if there's any educators watching, this is a great um, experiment that you can do with your students. Um, if you're police or investigators, it's a great experiment that you can do um, if you're teaching fingerprint development. So here's what I do. Nice and messy here, okay? I have three boxes, one, two, three, and I'm not going to do those nice oily prints. I'm just going to try to use my regular fingerprints, the ecrine glands, just those sweat glands, and I'm going to use different fingers because if I use the same finger for all three prints, by the time I get to my third print, um, I'm not going to get, um, it's already going to be worn down. So I want to be fair. So... I just use my regular fingerprints, and what I do is I say, use one fingerprint, day one, fingerprint for day two, third fingerprint for day three. Then we're going to take our powder, and I already did this, so I didn't have to wait and do this over three days for you, but I did this three days before filming. Then you're going to develop the first print, okay, so you develop Oh, that's looking sweet. That is fine, fine. That thing's popping like crazy. Popping like crazy. Now, so the short answer is, let me show you what day one looks like. So I just put that print down. I hit it with the magnetic powder. And I'm going to uh, zoom in on it to see the detail here. I'll just put the picture up. But 
you can see an amazing print here. Let's, let's just put a, a picture in there. Okay. So that's some amazing detail, right? You saw great, great detail. But what did I just say? A fingerprint is made primarily of water, moisture, right? So as the days progress, that paper is going to absorb that water. So your print is going to get a little bit less. So I have them do day, my students do day one. They develop that print. I wait 24 hours. They develop the print for day two. Let's take a look at day two and compare it to day three. Okay, so can we do a side by side? Let's try to do a side by side so they can see. Okay, here's day one. Now day two. Now, I don't know if you know what's coming, but day three. So we're going to wait another day. We're going to wait another day, and then they're going to develop day three, their fingerprint day three, and see what it looks like. Now, what you'll find, as I have here, you see the print that I just put down on the bottom. It's kind of messy. But if we're looking up here, day one, that print's looking fine. It's looking sweet, lots of detail, um, a great, great developed print. Day two, remember that paper is absorbing that moisture. It's starting to dissipate. That moisture is not staying on there. So day two print, not as great. And by day three, some some people didn't even get it. I, this one actually was from a student, and, and, and I did get a few very light ridges, uh, detail. But sometimes by day two, you're not going to get anything. So let's answer our question. Can you develop fingerprints on paper using magnetic powder? In a controlled setting? Absolutely. So real life scenario, this is how you apply it. You have a, uh, a bank robbery and someone hands the teller a bank note. They hand the teller the bank note. And you have to decide whether you want to process that with, um, you could use magnetic powder or, well, I'll show you how to use an anhydrin later on, but um, whether you want to use magnetic powder. The question I would ask is, well, how long ago did they hand the note in? If you're trying to process that note right away, they just handed the bank that teller and you're there and now you're processing that piece of paper right away. Try to hit it with the mag powder. If it doesn't work, you can still use uh, an anhydrin. Uh, if it's maybe hours later or a day later, I probably wouldn't do it. You could. Um, you could still develop it with um, an anhydrin if you try this. You could still try to do that. Um, but if you're on the scene, the thing is, if you work in a lab or whether you're on the scene, if you're in a lab, you'll have the ninhydrin. If you're just working, you're, uh, let's say, on the scene trying to develop this or back at your station, you might not have ninhydrin. So you can try it. So the answer is, yeah, you could. But would I recommend it to develop fingerprints on paper? I probably wouldn't. And you saw why. It dissipates. And uh, let's try to get all three prints together. Can we do that? All right. Let's try to put all three prints in there, take a look, and see how they change over time. Hold on. I'll be back. And I am back. So you can see how it dissipates over time. Um, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep on watching and share with your friends because who wouldn't want to learn this stuff? It's cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.